So I'm pulling up to a main lake dock here. And when I say main lake, this is just a point. The dam is behind this point, and this is just a real good big fish spot. Now, this spot gets fished a lot by a lot of different people, a lot of different baits. But most people, when they come up to a dock, most fishermen will come up to this dock and get a cast length away and throw a jig or a shaky head into that dock and almost work it out downhill, out back towards the boat. When I'm in a hurry, yes, I will fish a six inch mag draft and skip it up under there and swim it out towards the middle of the lake. But I catch more big fish on a mag draft simply by positioning the boat up on the bank. I'm literally kicking up mud up here. And what I'm gonna try to do is skip that mag draft across that dock, almost towards the front of it, where most people will position their boat and fish that swim bait uphill. I talk about it all the time, fish it uphill, fish it uphill. When you put a dock into play, that's just another way to fish that swim bait uphill and it gives that fish more chances to conceal itself and follow that swim bait up and commit to the bait. And it doesn't take long for, for them to tell you, hey, I'm here, I'm up under this dock. That's another, another thing about a, a mag draft is, you know, when they don't commit to it, a lot of times they'll follow the bait up, especially in a dock scenario like this where I'm casting out into deeper water, skipping it under there and swimming it back nice and slow. If they don't commit to it, it'll tell me where the fish are. The other thing too to consider when you're skipping, skipping a six inch mag draft in docks is that if you're on the deep side of the lake, the deep side of the dock, and you skip it under there towards the bank, reel the bait out, and let's say a big one follows it out. It pulls that big one off the spot, and now that big one is in the middle of the lake in open water, and that fish could either go out in the middle of the lake, to the left, to the right, and not necessarily go back to that dock. But when I position the boat up tight here, and I skip that bait under there, and cast it out towards the middle of the lake, and fish it uphill, if I get that big fish to follow it, it's got no choice but to go right back to that dock because he can't go out this way. So he's got to go right back to that position. And that's just another way to use a six inch mag draft as a search tool. So I could always come back and throw a big old jig in there, um, you know, a four inch bottle shrimp, something like that to get those fish to bite. You know, a six inch mag draft is a very, very good skipping swim bait. It's probably one of the best out there. But when an extra effort is required to skip way back underneath that dock, like if there's wind blowing on the dock like there is now, and a lot of times when you make a skip, the waves kind of ramp the bait up and, and you know it kind of shoots it off course. One of the things that happens is because of that impact, the hook bails loose from the body. Although that magnet in there is super strong, sometimes it bails loose. So one of the things I do to keep that hook in place, cocked and ready, I take one of the three hooks. I grab my pliers and I straighten out completely one of the hooks. I completely mangle the hook so it's almost perpendicular. And then I'll grab the remaining two hooks and almost pinch them together, okay? I'll pinch them together so it's more like a frog hook, okay? There's a little more meat there, that makes sense. Drop my pliers and I will take, I'll take the hook that I straightened out and just shove it right into the body of the mag draft. So what I have now when I'm going to skip this bait is I have an ultra strong magnet to hold the hook in place and also that bent hook stuck right in the middle of its body and that hook is going nowhere. So when, again, when that extra effort's required to skip up underneath these docks and when the waves are crashing in there and you gotta be a little more cautious, that hook will go nowhere with that little tip. The other thing too I look for when fishing a six inch mag draft is if I'm in a, 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 a grassy lake, I mean a, a lake with a bunch of grass, for one, a six inch mag draft is great around grass mag draft freestyle greater on grass but if it becomes a nuisance and you stop getting bites man one of the best things you could do is run from the grass and go to hard cover a lot of times when the weather change you could switch from the grass to hard cover so rock points docks anything hard 
it's a good little adjustment when the fish turn off the grass or you just want to get away from the grass and try something different. Vertical dock pilings just like this um, is a good alternative to grass. The other thing too is grass needs sunlight to grow. So if you're trying to get away from the grass and, and, and switch it up a little bit if you're in a tournament situation, skip this mag draft up underneath these docks where the grass isn't growing. There's those little voids back there because they don't get because the grass doesn't get sunlight. So those are just nice little holes back there where a big one could hang out all throughout the year. Now the six inch mag draft is an awesome, awesome skipping bait. But how do you actually skip the bait under there? Well, I've got a tip for you um, that'll help you get the bait where those big ones hide. So what you need to do is, first of all, look at the dock and you always want to cast the swim bait past the meat of the dock, okay? So there's the deepest, darkest area of the dock. That's typically where the big fish hang out. So you want to cast past that and swim the swim bait through there real slow Okay, and that big profile is especially appealing to those larger fish. So how do you actually do that? Instead of thinking in your mind, oh, I need to cast past that dark spot. I need to, I, I need to cast to the back of that dock. And you know, instead of finding that target and visualizing that target, what I, what I want you to do and what I typically do is I draw an imaginary line from the rod, my rod tip all the way to the back end of that dock, okay? And what I do is when I go to cast, I always use ro nice roll cast. And as I'm moving this rod tip, I'm visualizing that imaginary line. And what I wanna do is I wanna hit the middle point of that imaginary line and the rest of it will take care of itself. The bait will just smoothly travel along that imaginary line and hit that end spot. So I'm picking an imaginary line right about here and I'm gonna try to cast up underneath those two jet skis over there. And just like that, by hitting that, that, that center spot in that imaginary line, I'm able to skip that bait, that six inch mag draft, all the way up underneath there. Man, you really want to cast with full speed. I mean, 90% speed. Be confident that you could hit that middle point in that imaginary line, and you can skip this thing for yards. I mean, way back underneath there.